Good morning, church family. I call you blessed in the name of Jesus. Welcome to 714 prayer on Saturday morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Well, Pastor Rick here, and I'm excited about another day, another day of life. Praise God. Another day of the resurrected life, another day of life with Christ. Amen. It's an awesome, awesome day. We will live and we will not die. We will win. We will not lose. We're healed. We're not sick. The, the list of confessions that I can make goes on and on and on. And I pray that that's the same for you. I want to bring to you uh, this morning a, uh, a little Bible study, I guess. I don't know whether to go more one day or not, but probably. It's how to turn tragedy into triumph. How to turn bad things around to be good things, because that's what God does. And I'm taking my, uh, my thoughts from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, um, starting with verse 51. And I know that this passage deals primarily with the return of the Lord in times. We do live in end times, and the return of the Lord uh, is coming. I'm looking forward to it. But I also believe that these scriptures give us an understanding of things that we can face every day of our lives and, and how we can turn things around for good. Uh, and I know that fundamentally that's a part of the Lord's thing where he says, I, uh, you know, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are the called of the Lord according to his purposes. And so in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting with verse 51, it says, Behold, I tell you a, a mystery. Um, you know, God has a way of doing things um, that sometimes, yeah, well, we don't understand. He doesn't work like we do. I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, we, we have struggle and tragedy in the natural, and we tend to, we tend to stay there, stick in that spot. But God has a way of turning the natural things into supernatural things. He has a way of turning the ordinary things into extraordinary things. He has a way of turning sorrow into joy. He has a way of turning despair into hope. He has a way of turning fear into faith. And he has a way of turning tragedy into triumph. And per man, I tell you what, I am a testimony, a personal testimony of, uh, of that. But as I said, the road to triumph is often hard to understand. Why is this happening to me? We kind of see that God doesn't work like we do. The statement is said in 1 Corinthians chapter 51, verse, uh, excuse me, chapter 15, verse 51. Listen, I tell you a mystery. Can I help you with something? Not a mystery to God. <laughs> He's just saying, I'm telling you something that's a mystery to human beings. The fact of the matter is that we rarely understand the ways of God. So many times we focus on the little problem that is front of us, in front of us, when God is looking at the big picture that's all around us. Someone once said the tragedy of life is not the tragedy itself, but it's how we respond to the things that are happening to us. And I think that's very true because tragedy comes and we can respond in a very negative way with a, a plethora of emotions. So, yeah, tragedy, you know, every day has enough trouble of its own. We understand that. And so the tragedy in life is not the tragedy itself, but is how we respond to that tragedy. And if, if we can respond with the mind of Christ, I mean, that's another... Um, Bible study, I guess, altogether. But, uh, excuse me, you have your coffee this morning too, by the way? I forgot to welcome you to morning coffee. I got my go, go uh, golf, pro golfer cut. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting out on the golf course. Um, back to the, uh, the little morning lesson. A.W. Tozer said, God will not use a man greatly until he has been bruised deeply. Think about that for a minute. 
God will not use a man greatly until he has been bruised deeply. I've heard it said that you have to make a mess to have a message. You have to uh, pass the test to have a testimony. And you have to endure the misery to have a ministry. You see, that which the devil means for evil, God uses for good. God will turn things around for good if you and I will let him. You know, we may not understand why we're going through what we're going through. Maybe you're not supposed to understand why. Do you ever think of that? Maybe you're supposed to quit asking why and just look more at the journey. Look more at the journey than the destination. What, what am I to learn today with the pitfalls uh, of the journey, with the potholes in the road of the journey? What lesson am, am I to learn today? And I think that's a big part of what's uh, important for us to consider. And this will be the, uh, I believe the next thing that I'll talk about in this lesson is there are lessons to learn along the journey. Um, so just, you know, very quickly, keep in mind that God doesn't work like we do. We may have our idea of what things ought to look like. And... Um, God is the one who's able to turn trouble into triumph. Amen. Praise God. Tragedy into triumph. And the tragedy of life, the trouble of life, um, isn't the tragedy itself, but how we respond to it. How we respond to it. What lessons we are learning from it. So, you know, we all face it. We all have difficulties. We all face tragedy. We all face trouble. Um, but we don't all um, respond the same way in those moments of tragedy and those moments of trouble. So let the Lord teach us all a lesson. It's not so much about the destination. It's about the journey. It's about what am I learning today? We all got our eyes on the horizon, you know, where we expect things to get. How we expect things to turn. How I expect this trouble to turn to triumph. But what am I learning today in the journey while I'm in trouble? Maybe that's the question. Well, we'll talk more about this tomorrow. I uh, look forward to carrying on a little bit more with this particular lesson in mind from 1 Corinthians. And again, I know that that's a passage of Scripture that is really about end times, but there's lessons in there for us to learn. And the first one today is God doesn't work like we do. Amen. I hope that's blessed you and given you some strength and maybe, maybe altered your outlook a little bit. Shall we have a word of prayer together? It is, after all, 714 prayer, isn't it? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn uh, turn, turn away and turn around, you know, turn from their wicked ways, repent, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Holy God, Heavenly Father, Papa, God, Abba, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ this morning, and we thank you for another day, another Saturday, to uh, live life and do the things that uh, you called us to do and do the things that we need to do in, during, in the day. Uh, I pray that um, you are blessed by the walk that we, uh, by, the, by our walk and by our talk, <laughs> amen that our walk and our talk is done in a manner worthy of you that brings glory to you. So I praise you for the day. This is the day you've made, Lord, and I will rejoice in it because today is a part of the journey. Uh, praise the Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that I, I keep my, my eyes focused on you, my heart focused on you, um, you said that you would keep 
a person in perfect peace whose heart is fixed, whose mind is fixed on you. So help us all, Lord God, to be fixed upon you. Even though we know that you don't work like we do, uh, even though we know that your ways are higher than our ways, your thoughts are higher than our thoughts, um, and maybe we don't understand and rarely understand what the day is supposed to mean because we're so focused on the little problems, the little issues, uh, and not the big picture around us like you are. Help us to respond properly to trouble, to tragedy, to hardship, to tests, to trials, to temptations, and recognize that you have us in the palm of your hand. You've told us that there's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to every man. You will, with the very temptation, make a way of escape, because you're faithful. You're faithful. Praise God. Lord, I just pray for strength for all those that are listening to this video today. I pray that they have strength in their body, strength in their mind, and strength in their spirit. May they be strong in you, strong in the Lord, mighty in the Lord, because it's those, it's, it's that essence of being strong in you that helps us be strong in every other aspect of life, especially in the journey of trouble. And so, Lord God, I thank you that we can be strong, that we can have the joy of the Lord, that we can be filled with hope, even in hopeless situations. I thank you, Father. I pray that there is healing for folks. Lord, yes, healing from the ailments of the body, the physical ailments, the infirmities of the body, the flesh. But I pray, Father, that there's healing for their souls, that part of who they are in their mind, their thinking, their reasoning, that they can be whole. And depression cannot take a hold, and oppression cannot take up residence but Lord, that they can be free on the inside and feel that freedom. For you said that he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Thank you for that, Lord Jesus, for wholeness, uh, spirit, soul, and body. I pray today, Lord God, that people have a sense of you, that they can just tell the presence of God is with me today, that, that if they go outside for a walk, that they'll just have the sense that God is walking with me today. I thank you for those moments, Lord, where I can walk into a room and boom, wow, whoa, I just walked into the presence of God. Uh, I thank you for those um, rare and beautiful moments, Lord Jesus. So I, I pray for each of my friends, family, uh, all of our church goers, uh, all of our church family, Lord God. I just thank you for them and I ask that you would give them a heart of patience and perseverance and persistence and determination to make it through this season of coronavirus, to come out on the other side of it stronger because of the journey. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. I give you honor and glory for that. You are so good and so great. And Lord, I always want to ascribe all praise to you and give all praise and honor and glory to you, for you alone are worthy of it, deserve it. Uh, you're the one who deserves all praise. We thank you for that. So I come to you today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Praise God. That just invigorates me to... to get up. I mean, come on, I'm a human being. There's probably been a few mornings where I'm like, oh man, if I could just sleep a little bit more. But I know I have a meeting, yes, with you, but with God. A morning devotion, a time alone with the Lord. It sets, uh, it's, it's the key that unlocks the day. That's pretty powerful. Amen. Well, Miss Diane and I love you. We miss you. We look forward to the time that we can come back together. Uh, I'm planning it. I'm patient. I want you to know, uh, as your pastor, I'm patient with this. I'm not in a hurry to get everybody back at the church building. I believe that when the time is right, we're going to be able to do it all together. 
and it will be such a celebration that it'll be something we remember probably for the rest of our lives. I believe that. I really do. Um, and so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I pray that you have a blessed, a mightily blessed day today. Uh, don't forget that we have uh, our service tomorrow uh, at 10 o'clock. And we're going to have a time of praise and worship. We're going we're gonna to have church. Amen. We may not be in the building together, but we're going to worship the Lord. We're going to hear the word and we're going to have our lives forever changed by the dynamic power of God. I love you and I miss you. Uh, keep your nose in the book. You know, I say it every day. Keep your nose in the book. Keep your knees bent to heaven and stay connected to the body of Christ. I wish for you a supernatural day. I call you blessed in the glorious name of Jesus, King of Kings.